Merry Christmas 2024. Most of you probably don't know, but within Tesla circles, so the Tesla community on X and YouTube and the investment community, there's a lot of excitement over Tesla's latest full self-driving, which is referred to as version 13. This is the first version of their full self-driving software that they've used the large compute cluster, computer cluster at their Austin facility to train the cars and how they drive on video. So they feed in video of ideal human drivers and then the computer system learns and writes its own code on how to drive the car based on that versus software engineers, computer engineers um, writing software to tell the car how to drive. So this is a big shift often referred to as artificial intelligence or machine learning. Um, and I got to say, from my own experience, it's really, really good. And it is very close to being unsupervised. That means the driver doesn't even have to pay attention anymore. You just let the car drive. Now, this was touted huge back in 2016. The media was all over this. Elon Musk himself thought by 2017 they would have solved this problem and I was a huge skeptic at the time because it wasn't anywhere near good enough. So the timeline was wrong. The media had the timeline run wrong. Elon himself had the timeline wrong. But here at the end of 2024, I think we're actually very close. And it's not just me. Go look up videos of Tesla FSD version 13. You'll see examples of it all across YouTube and X. So I didn't want to do another video um, duplicating what other people have already done. They, there's a lot of miles video footage of this new version performing extremely well in New York and, and very urban environments that are very challenging. I don't have that here, but what I do have obviously is snow and I've not seen a lot of footage on how this acts in snow and snow covered roads. So we're going to test this out the latest version of full self-driving version 13.2.1 is what's installed on my 2024 long range model Y all wheel drive. I've got the normal all season continental tires that come on it and there's over 21,000 miles on these tires. So they're not brand new either. So Tesla's vision for this full self-driving software is that there doesn't need to be steering wheel or pedals at all in the car. They've released the cyber cab, which is exactly that, an autonomous vehicle that drives itself with no controls in it to even override. Um, so this software and its full self-driving needs to be dialed in. My biggest skepticism is in winter in areas like this where we get snow and the road is completely covered, it can't see the center line, it can't see the sideline. Um, the coefficient of friction on the road is changing significantly. How can it possibly handle that? And to me, that's the biggest barrier is these variable conditions. If you've got perfect weather, brightly painted lines on the road, it seems to do excellent. But how does it handle this? Here I am on a snow covered road heading home from work. It is actively snowing about two inches per hour. So a moderate snowstorm, 15 degrees Fahrenheit and I've got full self-driving enabled, which this version allows you to have your hands completely off the steering wheel. Very impressed here on a snow-covered road. It has adjusted its speed down significantly from the max. I've got it on chill just to be extra cautious. You can see we've got a 50 mile an hour max speed. It's adjusted itself down to 37. Starting off, there was some slip it detected and I believe that's what's using it, it uh, used that to calibrate the low road conditions and dialed itself back. Just very impressive here. We got a pedestrian up in the road ahead. We'll see what it does there, but they're off to the side quite a bit. Let's see how it stops here, if it's cautious enough not to slide. Very impressive. See how it takes off. Little slide there, a little uh, 
stability control, but nothing. Wow, I, I'm impressed. I thought snow covered roads would be a massive barrier for this vision based system. You can see there is no white line, there is no center line. We cannot see it. We only have the tracks here. And so you notice I occasionally play with the right the scroll wheel, wheel the on the steering wheel. This is to adjust the maximum mm. speed. So basically the the max speed on the cruise control or the full self-driving. Mm. Um, you can use that to dial back the max speed and be conservative or have control mm. on how conservative the driving is on that if you would like. Mm. Now, one thing I would do if I was driving, I'd be centered on the dry pavement. It has its wheels a little bit in the snow. That's a good way to get sucked into it. So I'm not the most comfortable with that. I'm going to take over. I don't like that. I don't like how it was going into the deeper snow. Moving on to this four lane interstate, you can see the snow coverage is much more even. The, this gets plowed more often, more salt gets applied. So there's not that buildup of heavier snow. So I re-engaged full self-driving and it went 30 miles approximately with without any engagement for me and, and did perfectly. Yeah, the day after the snowstorm, what it tested out on these roads where the color of the road changes quite a bit between dark, you know, the asphalt color and the snow. I tried this out last year with that version of full self-driving and if there were chunks of snow in the road, it viewed that as an obstacle and would slam on the brakes. So let's see what version 13 has for this. Otherwise, impressions so far during the snowstorm, I was actually really impressed. The speed, the acceleration, the braking, all adapted to the road conditions. It sensed slipping, um, not only during acceleration, but turning, you know, if it needed stability control, if it needed um, analog braking, and then really adjusted to that. The only negative, and, and I thought this was gonna be a massive barrier for full self-driving is snow covered roads. I can't see the lines, um, but it did it best. It did its best, just like we do with our eye eyeballs to find the road width and then bisect it, um, just cut it in half, even if it couldn't see the lines and keep you on the right half. The only thing is it cheated a little bit more than I'd like to the right-hand side of the lane where the snow gets a little deeper and if it grabs your tire, can pull you into the ditch. So that's the only times I disengaged. I'd, I'd rather have it cheat more towards the middle, um, especially if there's bare pavement like we had in some of those um, where other cars have driven to stay in those tracks versus going over to the right. Um, so that's an improvement. So my main barrier, you know, thinking about this is, is full self-driving actually here. Can I go in a cyber cab and get a ride in conditions like that? I'd, it's a lot closer than I thought with those few caveats, but that was during the snowstorm. Now that the roads have been plowed and it's not really an issue where um, you're gonna get off the tracks in front of you and get sucked into the ditch or, or what have you. Um, so maybe a cyber cab will never be able to go fully autonomous or even your Model Y fully autonomous during a snowstorm, but maybe the next day after the roads are somewhat cleaned up. Let's see. So far, so good. Even in these road conditions where we've got patches of snow that could be viewed as, as an obstacle or something like that from the camera, it's not, it's ignoring that. It's acceleration and braking, not had any issues slipping. I'm uh, quite impressed. Now you may be wondering why on the screen, the visualization of the car looks like Santa's sleigh with reindeer. All the other cars look like reindeer and people look like elves. Well, that's a special mode that Tesla has built in called Santa mode. And my kids love it. So I leave it engaged this time of year. Snow covered. Doing just fine. We'll see how we stop at the stop sign. See if we we'll use the analog brakes. Nope, no slipping.
Just to be clear, in all these clips, I'm sitting in the driver's seat with my hands in my lap and not touching the pedals or the steering wheel. The car is doing everything on its own. Feet, turn right, then you will arrive at your destination. Doing just fine. I, I'm impressed. Last year, it could not do this. This year, it can. Now turn right. More snow-covered roads. Now turn left onto Denver West See how it does with a left-hand turn on completely snow-covered road. Very cautious. I could have done it any better myself. Santa mode also changes the sound of the blinker to jingle bells. Perfectly fine stopping on snow also. Waiting for a car here. Of course, it looks like a reindeer because we've got it in Santa mode. Back on clear pavement. One thing I've noticed it may be the vision system picking up on the coloration of the road, but there's a significant decrease in speed, acceleration, deceleration the when the road is snow covered. I, I'm impressed. So as you can tell, I came away extremely impressed. I thought the road of the cyber cab would be first in places like Southern California, Arizona, Florida, that never have to deal um, with snow and ice, but it can do it. And I think the cyber cab in 2025 is probably going to be ready for widespread adoption in all different climates. Maybe not during an active snowstorm, but even still, um, they've got time to tweak the software and improve that a little bit. And let's be honest, Every time I drive around in an active snowstorm, I see humans that have driven themselves into the ditch all over the place. So, the hype is real. It's coming. The timeline was way off back in 2016, 2017 when people were talking about it, but here we are 2024, 2025. I think the advent of these huge computer clusters and these training models have changed the game and it's happening. Thanks for watching. Adios.